My name is Janita Flowers and I am an entrepreneur. I'm Mark Daigle and I'm an entrepreneur. My name is Marge Weir and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm Eric Webster and I'm an entrepreneur. My name is Michael Lopez. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm Tamara Prado, the executive director at the James Shea Hill Center. You know, we joke sometimes and say the Hill is its own 95-year-old startup. We have also gone through ups and downs and it really allows us to connect with entrepreneurs because we've been through that same journey. I've known since the age of 12 that I was going to be an entrepreneur. I didn't really know what that entailed, but I never really was a person that played by the rules or took no for an answer. It just was something inside of me that I couldn't quiet, I couldn't silence, but no matter how hard I worked, no matter the struggles or obstacles I came up against, it always satisfied me being with the cookie business. It wasn't just the resources of the books and databases that were available to me, it was the people. You were able to help me tap into something that I put on hold, and I was able to bring that to the forefront, but never compromising on my vision, never taking me off course of what I want to do, but actually enhancing and building what I do. It's a lonely journey being an entrepreneur, and this place is a great opportunity for people to be able to connect. Somebody will say, I saw you at One Million Cups, or I see you're speaking there, or saw you at an event. Have a space that the community understands and respects. Like if you hold an event at the Hill, like that means something. It's not people just scouting for business. Sometimes you go to different meetup groups where it's like, hi, I'm here handing out my card and trying to get your business, and I never feel that at this group. It's just way more collaborative. Product doesn't start out as a product, it starts out as a, as a dream. And when you're a chef, you test, right? You go in the kitchen and you say, oh, maybe less pepper or more, more salt. The Hill offers that test platform. Opportunity, I mean, that's, that's what we need all the time is a chance. I create art, all different styles of uh, performance and storytelling, and I try to figure out ways to not only tell those stories, but to try to make that how I earn a living. I could hear him moving about the house, but he finally came. He, he spoke to me through the door. Have you calmed down, Mrs. Gillis? And an opportunity to say, look at this, or listen to this, or read this, that is more difficult than you would think sometimes, just to get people to stop and hear what you have to say. The Hill Center was immediately like, yes, uh, do it here. Uh, come on in, uh, set up, and then uh, we're gonna help you get some people in here, and we think it might be cool, and lo and behold, it was. If we here at the Hill have that impact on just one entrepreneur, if we succeed, if they succeed, Everyone succeeds in Minnesota. In your whole life, it's the journey. There is not an end point. The Hill has, a, has essentially fueled my will, right? Because I need access to resources. I think what I've noticed about the Hill is that they're pivoting uh, to be able to say, okay, we've had this great legacy and we have this great building. How could we use that to, to help in ways that are needed now? Coming here every day is inspiring and it's exciting for me to be leading the team as we look ahead. You know, I ask often, what happens if we go away? What entrepreneur maybe was not assisted? What entrepreneur wasn't able to launch their idea? Uh, who didn't meet because they didn't come to the Hill? I see what we can become. I see the impact that we can have and continue to have on our community. This is such a special place. It deserves to be treasured, it deserves to be preserved, and it deserves to be supported by the community.